Texas, Florida, Arizona, and New York are the states with the most Google searches for people looking for a new state. Now, the other side of that coin is the top four states people are researching to leave. That is Florida, California, Alaska, and Arkansas. And I'm sure you're wondering, why did Florida make both lists? That's what we're looking at today in this video. This isn't the first time a state has been on both lists. California has been on both for the last four years, just falling off the move to side last year. Now, before you leave the comment, Florida is one of the most moved to states along with Texas. Both are still gaining, but it looks like a lot of recent transplants to Florida and longtime residents are looking to get out. So why is this? Why are people wanting to leave the Sunshine State? In this video, we're looking at the reasons given by new and old Sunshine State State residents that are looking to move out. I'm sure a lot of you in Florida are going to look at some of these reasons and go, they're really not a factor. But these are the things people are worried about and want to leave Florida because of. Got it? Get it? Good. Let's take a look. Number 10, tourists. Tourists can be found everywhere in the Sunshine State. One of the most annoying things about living in Florida and among the main reasons people are leaving Florida to move to places like South Carolina and Georgia is the tourism. I grew up in a touristy town by the beach in Southern California and I can tell you when you're a local during the tourist season, it's a little hard to get around and function and live your life normally. At the same time, you gotta understand that those tourists are paying a lot of your bills. If you live in a touristy area, directly or indirectly, on average, about 50% of the town or city makes some kind of money from the tourism. Now, this has been a complaint by Floridians since forever. I mean, it's a touristy state. You got all the beautiful beaches. You got Disney, SeaWorld, and Universal up near the Orlando area. Key West and all that. That could be a nightmare. All the keys. They're not really tourists, but the snowbirds also during the summer, they come down from Minnesota and New York and start clogging up the beaches. Since the pandemic ended, they had quite a surge in Florida. It actually went through the roof in 2022. They record-breaking year for tourism and things got a little crazy. Now, 2023 rolls around and people are kind of used to being back out and about. It dipped a little bit, but that was expected. But it was still higher than the numbers they had before the pandemic. This can really be seen in the cruise industry numbers. They're up again through the roof. And if you don't know, Florida has like three or four, maybe even five cruise ports. Miami being the busiest one in the world. But it is kind of strange that something that makes so much money Money for the state is actually driving a lot of the residents out or at least having them research other places to live. Number nine, animals. This one is really a non-factor, but people watch the news and they get this image in their head of what's going on in Florida. Every single year being on the West Coast, we see stories in the news about someone's dog getting snatched off a path in Florida by an alligator. You also get tons of news stories about, you know, people seeing animals like black bear, bobcats. They do have panthers, but I don't ever think I've seen a story on the news about someone having a problem with a panther. We call them mountain lions here. But Florida also has tons of different snakes that are venomous and basically the same stuff you'd face living almost any place on the face of the earth. But people build up an image in their head and it freaks them out and they want to leave. Usually though, it's older people once they've had a dog or a friend of theirs have their dog snatched off a sidewalk by an alligator that usually drives people out of the state. One that's become a real problem is the cockroaches. Now I've seen stories about that all on the West Coast about how Florida's got this serious problem with bed bugs and cockroaches. Once people start hearing stories about how the cockroaches are getting worse along with the bed bugs and any other kind of insect, there's a certain portion of the population that is packing their bags. But yeah, like I said, if you live in Florida or you're a reasonable human being, you know that this is really not a factor. Not like you're walking down the street and getting grabbed by alligators and black bears and Florida panthers. Side note, and I should mention this before someone freaks out in the comment section, there is a difference between mountain lions and Florida panthers. Florida panthers tend to be a little bit bigger, their tail's a little bit different, and things like that. Put it this way, if you're wandering through the woods and you see one and you yell mountain lion when it's actually a panther to your friends to warn them, nobody's going to stop and correct you. Number eight, traffic. Now, Wallet Hub ranks the traffic in Florida, the entire state, they rank them 27th in the nation. So that's middle of the road. But if you look at the cities, Miami is one of the worst in the nation. They actually come in number four. Tampa, which used to be outside the top 20, is now 14th. And of course, during the more touristy parts of the year, Orlando's a mess as well. This is driving a lot of people out and it's only going to get worse. People are still moving into Florida. The state is still growing, even though a lot of people are looking to check out. This of course means more people 
on the road, traffic gets worse, the cities and the state try and combat this by more construction, which of course creates more traffic in an attempt to fix the traffic problem. Last time I was in Miami, it was pretty brutal. I didn't really notice it when I was in Tampa. Jacksonville, which wasn't on the list of really bad ones, I thought they had pretty bad traffic. But to be fair, it's been a handful of years since I've been there, so who knows? Obviously, this is a problem for people living in the big cities of Florida. If you're moving to Lake Butler, don't worry about it. Number seven, politics. In recent years, Florida has been pushed to the front of the political culture war. Now, this is a problem for a lot of people. One, the people that don't see a lot of this politics is just theater. They get all worked up, they're angry, and it has to do with politics. This, of course, makes the people they know uncomfortable. And then those people that just don't care about politics, they're tired of hearing about it, which is a majority of the country. All the people that are all caught up in their politics think that everyone feels their way or everyone cares who's a Democrat, everyone cares who's a Republican. No, most people don't give a shit doesn't matter to them. But the political atmosphere in Florida has gotten rough over the last couple of years, and this is, you know, kind of wearing a lot of people thin, and they want out. I don't know how many times I've seen comments or gotten emails from people asking me, where can I go where people don't care about politics? I always tell them the same thing. Head to the Southern Atlantic Ocean and live in a town called Edinburgh of the Seven Seas. They don't care about politics there. But yeah, believe it or not, a lot of people say the politics are driving them out of Florida, or at least driving the desire to move out of Florida. Number six, hurricanes. Yeah, hurricanes can be a problem in Florida. We've all seen the news. If you've lived in Florida long enough, I'm sure you've lived through a few hurricanes. Florida only averages one hurricane a year, and not every single one of them just tears the roof off places. Some of them, they're just like a really bad storm, but occasionally some do come through and just devastate whole communities. And that's scary. You know, every state, every city has some kind of natural disaster like that. California has earthquakes. You know, you go up to the New York area, New England, they have blizzards, ice storms, got tornadoes in the middle of the country. Everyone has some. Hurricanes are freaking scary because they could devastate whole cities. And I'm sure a lot of the people in Florida are going, they're really not that big of a deal because that's how I am with earthquakes. But I know people that are from areas that don't have earthquakes and it scares the hell out of them. I've lived through seven good earthquakes in my life and countless small ones. Only seven times have I actually stopped and went, whoa, what is going on here? Most of the hurricanes, you know, you're like ordering food someplace and you both feel it, the cashier and you, and you stop for a second, look at each other because sometimes they build when you realize it wasn't a big deal, you continue ordering. You might say, you feel that? And then you say, yeah. And then you go about your life. Well, a lot of hurricanes are the same way. You know it's coming. It's not going to be that big of a deal. You just, I don't know, get your dog inside the house and just let it do its thing. And then you get back to your normal life. But those ones that occasionally come through that just tear things up, that scares a lot of people, especially if they're new to Florida. There's actually a lot of retirees that, let's say, spent two, three years in Florida, and then they end up moving to like Arizona. And it's because of hurricanes a lot of times. There have been quite a few different studies by like the University of Florida and Florida State University on the hurricanes and their frequency, damage they do. It's really interesting. But as you read it, you kind of realize they're not as big a deal as the press likes to make it seem. I guess that's pretty much everything these days. Number five, population growth. Yeah, Florida is growing like we said. And that, you know, brings a lot of problems with it like the traffic from earlier. Most popular states have seen a lot of this. You know, it comes and goes in waves. New York has had surges. They've always been popular, but they've had these surges that make things really rough. California's been having a surge since the 1800s when an old man found a chunk of gold and only had his mule to celebrate with. Whoa, mule! In just recent years, their surge has finally ended. Florida's turn. Florida's always been popular, but they've been gaining steam in recent years, even though, I mean, the whole point of this list is why people want to move. Just so we're clear, for every hundred that want to move to Florida, there's about 30 that want to get out. Population growth creates a lot of problems, especially infrastructure problems. You got to build more roads, you got to build more schools, more hospitals. You gotta hire more police. You gotta build more fire stations, more Starbucks. It's really strange though. Population growth is what most cities wanna see, especially if you're a business owner in a city. But at the same time, brings a lot of problems. Like I always say, more people means more problems. A lot of people are starting to see these problems now in Florida, and they wanna get out. Number four, the cost of living. 
Yes, the cost of living in Florida is on the rise. Now, when you hear these numbers, you're not going to think they're a big deal, but one percentage point is a big deal when you're talking about cost of living. Currently, the cost of living in Florida is 1% above the national average. Six years ago, it was 5% lower than the national average. That is a big jump. Utilities currently are 2% above the national average, and food is about 3% above the national average. Healthcare is 4% lower than the national average, which was great. Transportation is 2% higher than the national average, and goods and services are 2% lower than the national average. Five years ago, it was 4% lower than the national average. So for a lot of longtime residents, they're starting to see the prices go up. If you're moving here from New York or Virginia, or I don't know, any place else that's kind of expensive, you probably look at Florida and go, oh, they're still pretty cheap. Where that's true, they're also on the rise. The people that really feel this are the longtime residents. Now, if you want to move to one of their major cities, that's where it gets kind of rough. Cape Coral overall is 8% higher than the national average. Fort Lauderdale is 21% higher. Gainesville is 3% higher. Miami is 22% higher. And Orlando is 4% higher. Oh, one last one. Sarasota is 6% higher. There is still some savings to be found. Tallahassee and Pensacola are both 5% lower than the national average. But yeah, that's one of the reasons people are searching to leave Florida, the rising cost of living. Number three, safety. Florida has a good amount of crime, even though they've been saying they're at a 50 year low. It's actually, they're using bad math. The data they're going off of when they say they're at a 50 year low is from 2021. It's actually a report that was published in 2022 using 2021 numbers. Here's the thing. In 2021, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement was making a change in how they collect crime data or data, however you want to say it. They use something called the summary reporting system which basically counted crimes each month and only recorded the most serious one in the incident. So let's say a guy freaks out in an apartment building and assaults somebody with a broom. During the process, he broke a bunch of windows, maybe made some death threats, and threw some lady's poodle on the roof. That would just be an assault with a broomstick. So they were switching to the new FBI standard. The new system is called the National Incident-Based Reporting System. It's fancier because it includes more types of crimes and allows them to keep track of multiple offenses that happen in one incident. Well, not all the agencies in Florida switched to the new system in 2021, and some didn't even get their information in by the deadline, so they were excluded from the report. This, of course, leads to a very low crime rate. I'm not saying Florida is as dangerous as it was in the 1980s when it hit its peak. They're just not as safe as they want you to believe. The locals know this. That's why a lot of them are looking to get out. Number two, insurance premiums. Insurance premiums are pretty high in Florida. Car insurance, they're ranked sixth in the nation. Four years ago, they were ranked eighth. Homeowners insurance, isn't the highest, but it's on the rise. They're actually number 12 in the nation right now. A few years ago, they were number 17. And in recent months, major insurance companies have pulled out of the Florida market. Farmers insurance has left, bankers insurance, Lexington insurance has left. With fewer options, that means the prices are bound to go up in the coming months and years. Besides the ones that have left, in an article by USA Today, they said 15 other insurance companies have stopped writing new policies in the state. You don't have to be a fortune teller with a crystal ball to know that the prices for insurance are going to be going up in Florida. All right, before we get to number one, if you're thinking about leaving Florida or you want to move to Florida, there's a link for home and money in the description box below. They can get you in touch with a real estate agent anywhere in the country. All right, on to number one. And number one, rising real estate costs. Just like the cost of living, the price of homes and rent and everything else is going up in Florida. Florida has seen a steady increase in population over the decades, just like we've been talking about. Currently, there's more than 22 million people that call the Sunshine State home. And some days it seems like all of them live in Miami-Dade. The population increase has created competition that has pushed housing prices higher. Currently, the Average home value in Miami, this is just one example, is $568,000. That's up 6.2% from last year. Year before that, it jumped 5.8%. This year, it's looking like it'll be closer to 6% again. In 2020, the average home value in Miami was $370,000. At this rate, it'll double the 2020 numbers sometime in late 2024. Now, two things that happen when this goes on. A lot of people that have owned homes in 
in Florida forever, they see the prices go up and they want to sell and leave the state. You also have people that let's say are renting or wanting to buy a bigger house and they're seeing where the prices are going. They're going to leave the state. And those are the people that are searching for new places to live. All right. That's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day and be nice to each other.